Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I would now invite Ambassador Salman Bashir to deliver his remarks. Before I invite him to the podium, I would like to introduce him. Uh, Ambassador Salman Bashir's diplomatic career spanned over three decades covering both multilateral and bilateral appointments at home and abroad. He joined Pakistan Foreign Service in February 1976. At uh, Ministry of Foreign Affairs, he has served as Director General of the United Nations and International Organizations and additional Foreign Secretary Asia Pacific. His diplomatic assignment abroad included Pakistan mission to United Nation and specialized agencies in Geneva, a Director General for Political Affairs at OIC Secretary at Jeddah. He has been ambassador to Denmark and later to China and Mongolia. From 2008 to 2012, he has served as Foreign Secretary before being appointed as Pakistan's High Commissioner to India from 2012 to 2014. Ambassador Salman Bashir. Sir, you have the floor. Assalamu alaikum, Bismillah rahman rahim I am indeed grateful to my friend Azaz for inviting me to this very important occasion of the launching of his memoirs. Uh, it is indeed uh, a great privilege and an honor uh, to be able uh, to speak on this occasion. Uh, as a friend and a colleague, I think uh, there were facets to Izaz's personality which uh, uh, were sort of hidden from the view, if I may say, uh, as far as many of his friends and colleagues are concerned, which this book has amply revealed, and all very good facets, may I add. Well, uh, Izaz, Nadia, particular, of course, your and the children's efforts have been duly acknowledged in the book. Uh, I wish to sort of uh, mention this because it's hugely, hugely important uh, for the family, the, for the wife and the children to be supportive of a, uh, of a person who dedicated his life uh, in a very remarkable way to the service of his country uh, in a very multifaceted manner. I think this is, uh, and I acknowledge, of course, uh, uh, the comments made by Dr. Saab, I think you've done a wonderful job. Uh, both uh, the two doctors, if I may say, Talit Shabir and Rifat Hussain Saab. Uh, you have uh, contributed your thoughts, your impressions. I agree with you. I think uh, it's a superbly written book, a narration of Izaz's life and times. Uh, I have no hesitation using a superlative to say it is indeed a masterpiece. In soft, subtle, and authoritative ways, this great work of introspection, in my view, definitely stamps Izaz's persona, and justifiably so, on half a century of Pakistan's history. As I said, it's a fascinating read, life journey vividly recalled and scripted with an animated spirit. I would also call it a literary masterpiece and an authentic narrative of Pakistan's recent history, a plain but passionate rendering of its many challenges and national accomplishments, an authentic and copious account of Pakistan's diplomacy, the quest for security, deft navigation of the treacherous and stormy waters and minefields of global and regional politics. Seeing through the mist of time, the management of our relations with great powers and troublesome neighbors alike is indeed for anyone especially, uh, you know, in the foreign ministry, uh, a momentous undertaking. 
interweaving the childhood years and personal life with a narrative of society's transformations all around Azaz. Not only that, but in the midst of global and regional turbulence, this all requires, uh, you know, the narration requires a great deal of skill. My generation, if I may say our generation, can directly relate to your script on multiple levels, be they emotional or aspirational. And of course, share all the way the deep desire that impel you to make a difference. Your childhood impressions of Pakistan, hopes and dreams for a great future for our nation, were in fact translated in many splendid ways in your own illustrious career. I particularly admire the importance you give to the foundational values, gifted by your loving parents and noble lineage duly celebrated in the footprints. You have been a diplomat, I believe, instinctively attuned to the demands and skills of this fine profession. As you just said, and as you say in your book, uh, you are and you have been a consensus builder whose contributions, I believe, were consequential for the country that, as you have said ample times, that you hold so dear. This book, in my view, is a valuable addition to the diplomatic history. In an age of contradictions and great complexities, it provides an insider's view and provides a context to the great battles of ideas in shaping our foreign relations. You were, as us, undoubtedly fortunate and gifted in being at various advantageous vantage points in your career, which enabled you to witness firsthand the turns and twists in the history of the world. Your observations and anecdotal accounts enrich your book and make it an uh, engrossing read. Chapter after chapter, like a novel, the story of our times, replete with facts, is narrated with a relish typical of an enthusiastic diplomat, ever ready to play, all, to play and cover all corners of the field. Foot, Footprints is a compelling read. It is not a dry book on Pakistan's foreign policy. With candor, but with due respect, Azaz reveals the personal predilections of some of our leaders. The Foreign Office has always faced this challenge in tampering the personal and political egos of the masters with the imperatives of country's national interests. The vision of Jinnah, Jinnah's Pakistan that imbued your spirit runs through your narrative. Lamenting how that vision was lost and the continuing efforts by our people to reclaim and realize it. Your book should also contribute to calming down the raging national controversy about who makes foreign policy. The role of the military and the intelligence in policy formulation has been a classic theme and a critique about our national political dispensation. You subscribe, in my view correctly, to the importance of establishing a National Security Council and do point out that in its absence, it is left to the Foreign Ministry to take or assume the role of a consensus builder or an external policy among the various stakeholders. Competing and often contradictory outlooks of civilian military and of the economic ministries, in fact, of the entire national governance structure is harmonized and synthesized by the Foreign Office. And as you point out, this is not unique to Pakistan and certainly not unusual. In the final analysis, the Foreign Office is the custodian of the national interests of the people of Pakistan a sacred duty that demands the highest levels of commitment. 
We who served this institution are proud to say that we served the nation with unswerving faith in the noble ideals that are intrinsic to the foundations of our great country. The Foreign Service continues to demonstrate ample dedication, skill and commitment in navigating the tortuous and complex web of global politics with only national interests at heart. As Director General South Asia, you have been a witness and participated and have now recorded accurately the perpetual cycles of hope and despair in Pakistan-India relations. I read personally with great interest the accounts of our interactions with Indian diplomats, especially the encounter at the Hyderabad House in New Delhi. Without revealing the contents of your book, I would like to in particular mention the epilogue. It is remarkable for its clarity and for crystallization of your own thoughts about what is needed. I commend you for your bold suggestions on absolutely central issues germane to our future regarding governance, political reform, the political system, Kashmir, Gilgit, Baltistan, and in developing the geoeconomic arc that will take Pakistan and our region forward on a path to stability, peace, and prosperity. But as they say, there is no finality to history. The past shapes the future. It is important that the new generation or the generation now at the helm is mindful of that. For them, your book will indeed be a source of great inspiration. This book is not only a source of inspiration for our young or aspiring diplomats, but will also, in my view, be a source of immense guidance to anyone interested in authentic Pakistan. And here I mean all the many foreign diplomats posted to Islamabad. They may find it useful to develop realistic insights about Pakistan's interests and aspirations. Above all, it is about the people's Pakistan that needs to once again take the center stage in national and international affairs. I'm certain that the footprints will be a huge success. Thank you.